In today's lesson, we'll be talking about how to solve a system with three variables. Now we have three different techniques that we could use. One technique is by using substitution. Another technique is elimination. And the third technique is using our advanced calculator. The way that we would use a calculator is we could utilize the matrix function uh, only for linear systems. So if there was like an x squared or y squared, you couldn't use a calculator. Uh, we don't really use substitution. So let's say not, um, not commonly used. Usually when we have a system with three variables, really we do elimination. And the idea is to go from three variables down to, with three equations, we want to go to two variables, two equations, down to one variable with one equation. And then once we get that far, we're going to plug back in and solve the other, solve for the other variables. Let me show you with an example. Say we had a problem like this. X plus 2Y minus 3Z is equal to 50. And 2X plus Y plus 2Z is equal to 3, and 2x minus 5y plus 4z is equal to negative 79. Now what I want to do is try to come up with a game plan to go from three equations with three variables down to two equations with two. So what I could do is maybe take these two equations and I'll eliminate the x. I'll take these two equations and I'll eliminate the x. So that gives us two equations with just the y and the z variables. If I multiply the top equation by negative 2, uh, I would get negative 2x minus 4y plus 6z is equal to negative 100. And we still have 2x plus y plus 2z is equal to 3. And if we add those together, we'd get negative 3y plus 8z is equal to negative 97. Now for the bottom two equations, if we multiply the bottom one by negative 1, we'd get 2x plus y plus 2z is equal to 3. Negative 2x plus 5y minus 4z is equal to 79. And if we add those together, the x's cancel, and we would get 6y minus 2z is equal to 82. So you could see we have three variables, three equations, two, two variables, two equations, And now we're going to try to get one variable with one equation. What we could do is we could multiply this bottom equation by, or this top equation by 2. And we would get negative 6y plus 16z is equal to, I think this would be negative 194. And then this would be 6y minus 2z is equal to 82. If we add those together, this would be 14z is equal to uh, 
a negative 112, and z would equal negative 8. If we know what z is, we could plug it back in and get what y is. If z is negative 8, negative 2 times negative 8 is 16, so 82 minus 16 is 66. And 6y would equal 66, so y would be 11. And then we could plug those two in to one of the originals. Like we'll use the top one, x plus 2y minus 3z is equal to 50. Well, if we know y is 11 and z is negative 8, we'd get that, let's see here, so we have 22 plus 24, and then 50 minus that answer would give us 4. So we went from 3 variables, 3 equations, 2 variables, 2 equations, down to 1 variable with 1 equation. So that's the main idea. Let me show you what some other kind of problems would look like, too. What if we had a problem like this, where it was 5x plus 2y is equal to 0, negative 3z is equal to 12, and 6y plus 5z is equal to 10. Now, one thing that I would do is I would get organized. I'd maybe make a column for all the x's, the y's, the z's, and then our constants. And by writing it this way, you could see we could easily solve for z. We know that z is negative 4. That's obvious when we get organized like that. If z is negative 4, we could plug that right in here. 6y minus 20 is equal to 10. So we get 6y is 30, or y is 5. And then, of course, we could plug that in right here. And 5x plus 10 is equal to 0, so we know that x would be negative 2. One way you could write your answer is you could write it like this, like where it's x comma y comma z, negative 2 comma 5 comma negative 4. And in case you're curious, sometimes there's a fourth dimension too, which would be time. Uh, the t would be after the z. So if this was a four variable problem, it would be x, y, z, and then we would put a t at the end. We're not going to see those kind of problems. All right, and third problem, it says x minus y plus 3z is equal to negative 8. 2y minus z is equal to 15. And 3x plus 2z is equal to negative 7. Now, looking at this problem, we need to have some kind of plan here. So... Let's see what we could do with this. So this problem doesn't have an x in it, this equation right here. So maybe what we could do is we could eliminate the x from these two problems and then use that second equation. So if we were going to eliminate the x from the, from the first and the third, I could multiply the top equation by negative 3. And I'd get negative 3x plus 3y minus 9z is equal to 24. The bottom equation would be 3x plus 2z is equal to negative 7. If we add those together, we would get 3y minus 7z is equal to 24 minus 7 uh, is 17. Now let's use our second equation here. So I, we recognize that that second equation doesn't have an x in it, so maybe if we use the first and the third, we could eliminate the x, and now we have uh, a friend to match up with that second equation. 2y minus z is equal to 15. Well, I'm going to multiply the bottom by negative 7. So we get 3y minus 7z is equal to 17. 
and the bottom would be negative 14y plus 7z is equal to 15 times negative 7 is negative 105. It's almost like a big puzzle. This would be negative 11y is equal to 17 minus 105 is negative 88. And we could see then that y is 8. And once you get one variable, everything else just kind of falls into place. So if y is 8, we could plug it in, see what z is. That would be 16 minus z is equal to 15. So z would be 1. And if z is 1, we could plug that in and figure out what x is. So 3x plus 2 times 1 is equal to negative 7. So 3x would equal negative 9. x would be negative 3. So the answer for this would be negative 3, comma, 8, comma, 1. Or you could just write them separate like I did. One more problem. What if we had x minus 3y plus z is equal to 1? and 2x minus y minus 2z is equal to 2, and x plus 2y minus 3z is equal to negative 1. So the way that we solve these is we pick, go from 3 to 2 to 1. So I'm just looking, and it looks like we could easily eliminate the x's. So I'm going to use these two, and if I multiply this top equation by negative 2, I get negative 2x plus 6y minus 2z is equal to negative 2. Combining that with 2x minus y minus 2z is equal to 2. We get, if we add those together, that turns into, uh, let's see here, the x's cancel, 5y minus 4z is equal to 0. We'll do the same thing with these bottom two. I'll multiply the bottom by negative 2, and that would give us 2x minus y minus 2z is equal to 2. Negative 2x minus 4y plus 6z is equal to 2. Combining those would give us uh, the x's cancel. And we get negative 5y plus 4z is equal to 4. So we went from 3 to 2. Now let's combine these. Looks like we could just automatically eliminate the y's. If we add those together, the z's actually cancel too, and we get 0 is equal to 4. This is an example of an inconsistent solution, meaning there's no solution. Remember, if you get 0 equals 0, that means it's an infinite number. They're the same line, but 0 is equal to anything else would be no solution. So for homework, what I would like you to please do is on page 519, please do numbers 13, 19, and 21. All right, thank you very much. Have a nice day.